Hello. Hello, Coco. Hello, Roddy. How's Coco? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Are you excited to cast some games? Yes, I'm ready for my yearly cast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can do it a lot more often, Coco. The door is always open. You know that. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, well, for some reason, my uh, stream died right before the weekly, so that was very annoying, even though I already played three games. But I don't think it was my internet. I think it was Twitch. I put it on Twitch. Everything has been good so far. So I'm starting to think that I'm pretty good, but let's see if we can at least hang in there for a few more series. Mm. You ready for some intros, Coco? I'm ready. Why don't you do both? The people want Coco. <laughs> sure. Okay. In the bottom left corner, the red Zerg playing for Basilisk. It is Rainer. Bam. He's out of his Jack Frost era. Now he's, I don't know, Rainer. The, dick, <laughs> the dickhead era. <laughs> love it, love it. Okay. And the top right playing for uh, what the heck is APPR? Apprentice Esports. Apprentice Esports. It is DISC. French Canadian DISC. How was the baking stream, Coco? It was really fun, actually. A lot of things went wrong, um, but it, they turned out amazing. They were so good. I had like five cinnamon buns in two days. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard that you were brushing your hair again. Uh, in the, probably. In the middle of the letter game. Yeah, well, sometimes I can't help it. If I feel like there's like a knot in my hair, if I don't brush it, it's all I can think about. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it ruins my game. <laughs> All right. Poor Vicky. <laughs> she didn't say anything. It was me who saw it. <laughs> I think. <All> right. <laughs> Vicky said, please don't tell her I saw it again. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I will. All right. All right, guys. It's Oracle first for this. Second Oracle is about to come out, but we're going to focus on the first one. That one, though, gets nothing. Maybe one drone in. Nope. Oh. The third, but I guess rainy. You just don't really get anything for free. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, it was really good uh, response by Rainer. But I think the second Oracle definitely has a chance to find a couple of drones if Disc has good control. What do you make of the Phoenix some... after two Oracles? I don't know. I feel like I don't often see Phoenix versus Zerg except from you. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only uh, pro player that does that. But uh, I think it could be fun. And I think it just wants to make one to kill an Overlord and then maybe go to the other side of the map to like lift their queen and then see if the Oracles can find some damage. But I just kind of think it's a pretty big investment. It's relatively late in the game. I don't see it have much of an impact. I'm not sure yeah. if this is really the way to go. I feel like almost no pro does this. Like some of them will still build a lot of phoenixes like I do, but just the one mm. random phoenix to only kill an overlord feels like a big investment for not getting a whole lot in return. Yeah, I kind of agree, but uh, we'll see what he does. Maybe he ends up going phoenixes. Probably not, but maybe. I... Uh... I think it's really nice that he kept both oracles alive, though. Maybe we'll find some damage a bit later. I don't know, but maybe. <laughs> it's gonna be tough. Who do you think is gonna win the weekly today, Coco? It's a tough one to predict, I feel uh, like. Who's playing? Let me, look at the, let me look at the finals. It's gonna be Raynor, Max, and Clem, I guess, or in the finals. Those three, probably. Uh, Raynor uh, and Max would run into each other in the semi-finals, assuming that they both get there. Yeah. Well, Rainer got a little bit lucky that Max got taken out by Gung Fu last week. So I kind of, I don't know. I think uh, Max is doing a lot better versus Zerg these days. I still think it's his weak weakest matchup, but uh, I think it's possible that he busts out a win versus Rainer and then plays Clem in the finals. I don't know. It's obviously possible as well that maybe Showtime plays against Rainer in the quarterfinals. And that's going to be a very difficult one. We saw that I'm Katowice, but I guess we can talk about it in a bit. I do agree with your analysis, obviously. Rainer is going to send it to the other side of the map. He's got a bunch of queens. He's got Overlord Speed, so he can start dropping some creep, create a bit of a creep highway. And he is just going to be a very aggressive boyer against Disc. And this is, for instance, where that Phoenix is an investment that you really wish you didn't make. Because that's still a decent amount of resources that are just not going to be useful here at all. And you look at the army supply, Coco. 80 against 27. That almost doesn't yeah. even feel fair. I don't... I feel like Disc has no army. It's just those, like, two Adepts, two Zealots. The overcharge immediately gets called, and it's going to help a little bit. But even... It's just way too much army for Raynor. 
There's so many circling <laughs> roaches so ravages. Much. It's kind of yeah. ridiculous. This was sitting on a bit of money. He has one immortal coming in from the left. But that immortal is only shooting at the wrong unit. Zerglings and queens are not the targets that immortals are looking for. And yeah. Discus is getting completely overran here in a seven minute game, in which not a whole lot happened. Just Reyna doing Reyna things, clean defense, one attack, and it's over just like that. Yeah, it looks a lot like my PvZ games. A lot of nothing, and then I'm dead. You, so did, I definitely relate. Did you ever try the Phoenix uh, DT style, Coco? I feel like it's made no, for you. But I, I really feel like I would love it. And it looks so good when you do it. Like, it looks so clean. So I know I have to try it. Actually, I've been doing a lot more macro versus Zerg these days, so I should try that. Mm -hmm. A little while ago, when I stopped by your stream, I was blown away. The kiting, <laughs> the micro. I was like, oh my, who is this lady? I didn't even I, recognize you. I'm not kidding. I have really improved at my macro. Like, I decided... I know that what you said was micro, but I decided recently, I was like, I'm tired of losing to the same stuff every time. So I've been getting coached a little bit. I've been taking third bases at four minutes. I'm, I'm on top of it. All right. Who, who's done the coaching? Kind of a lot of different people, but you know, like Foxer, Clem, when Cam, M Can's around, he'll coach too. We just have like a discord of people who are willing to give feedback and ideas and stuff like that. I'm getting messages from Rainer Coco. I forgot exactly what we were talking about two minutes ago, but I think he said something along the lines of this was lucky. And Rainer is whispering me saying, lucky my ass, Coco. Tell her that. Wait, I'm hearing lucky? the shit talking. <laughs> Wait, I didn't say lucky. I said, uh, is he talking about how I said it's nice that he had the oracles alive? Or when did I say lucky? I don't know, but uh, he's just memeing, obviously. But I don't know exactly what it is, but he's tuning in and he's calling you out. <laughs> The peanut gallery is listening. Yeah. No, I, I never. I do not ever think it's lucky for Rainer to win against Disc. Obviously, I think. Oh, sorry. I think he has a uh, very good chances versus Disc. Hey, uh, have you played any Padel? Because you said there was a court so close to your house. I haven't played recently, but I have played like maybe five times now. Oh. And I, I really I like it. I'm not very good at all, but I think it's really fun. I like to try and do like trick shots yeah. of like the wall. Do you have your own racket or you just rent a racket? I just rent a racket there. They have ah. like a racket vending machine. Ah, okay. How much is it mm. to uh, rent a racket each time? Uh, it was pretty cheap. I think it was like a hundred kroner. So that's like $10. And okay. then you keep it for as long as you want for the day. So like Through. in total to rent like the court and everything, it's maybe like 30 euros for everything. Pretty good records are not that expensive though. So if you plan on uh, playing a few more times, it is definitely worth just buying your own because then A, you also yeah. get used to it, right? Because it's yours. And B, then you don't have to pay the 10 buckies every single time. That's true. But right now I'm addicted to Counter-Strike. So I'm just playing Counter-Strike like every minute of free time I have. <laughs> CS2? Yeah, I'm so addicted. You still have to play with us. All right, one day. <laughs> after America, after the Big Gabe Cup, after some regionals and whatnot, if we then have some free time, I'll play some Counter Strike. Do I have to buy the game or not? It's free. Everything's free. Sick. All right. I might be in. Okay, guys. <laughs> round two. Oceanborn. Bottom right side. We are looking at the main base of the man who is one round, uh, one map away, rather, from making it into the quarterfinals, where he will play a Protoss. We don't know which one. Could be Showtime. Could be Harstum. This is Basilisk Rainer. And in the top, sorry, I wasn't following you, so I didn't know you were there. In the top left, it is the man who is down one map right now, but looking to come out stronger in game two, playing for Apprentice Esports disc. Whoa, let's go. Yep. I've become a balance whiner, Ronnie. I've decided that there's no good, like, Protoss balance whiner, so I want to be the beacon of hope for the Protosses. I'm just balance whining as hard as I can, every direction. I feel like we have a couple now. I feel, well, maybe. I don't know. I, I feel like there's not that many. I mean, there was like, one who made a tweet after he made it to the finals of the weekly and he lost against Clem. And... Oh my god, that was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> uh, we thought... need more of that. <laughs> yeah, we, we need, you really think that that's what we need? <laughs> Okay, well, that's a bad example. <laughs> we need Max Pax to come forward and be like, Protoss sucks. And then we can all rally behind him. <laughs> Max Pax too nice, he wouldn't. But he did complain <laughs> about uh, Terran to his dad a little while ago. We got him to say that on the record. So that's something. <laughs> I love that. 
<laughs> we need more. So what is your issue? Um, pretty much, I feel like, at least for me, if because I've been starting to macro recently, and I feel like versus Zerg, if I don't go carriers, I lose every single game. Mm -hmm. And if I go carriers, I win every time. So I feel like you have to go carriers, is my complaint, in <laughs> late game versus Zerg, and I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I do understand that to some degree, because I've had that for a while as well, where I feel like if I do want to go carriers and I end up with carriers, I win most of my games unless I really play against late game gods. It's just yeah. that it's uh, it's a lot easier to show up with 28 roaches than it is to show up with the answer for 28 roaches. And yeah. Those games are tricky, but that's why the Phoenix DT, Coco, then you don't really even need to go carriers, but that is at okay. least good enough to survive and force them to play more difficult styles rather than just spamming roaches, links, ravages, and banes, which yeah. you don't really have to be a rocket scientist for. Even though the Zerks, they really feel like they're in the zone while they're building some drones and they show up with 120 army supply, but... I personally don't think that's the most difficult thing about StarCraft. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. I think this game, we're probably going to be seeing pretty similar things from both players. Disc is sending two adepts into the natural. Just, I don't think he's going to finish that. Oh, he did finish it, okay. Looking to just pick off a couple of lanes, maybe a drone, and get out. But uh, also just getting a pretty good scout, but there's not that much happening yet. One adept dies. Wait, is this one gonna I really thought that they would be able to go past it. Oh, they both yeah. die, man. Rainer is lucky. You know what, Coco? <laughs> you run to something. That kid is lucky. I didn't mean to say he was... I don't know what the context was, but, yep, yeah, he's lucky. He's a lucker <laughs> dog, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I didn't do any predictions for this series, by the way, guys. Sorry. So, yeah. No, the prediction is still open from the last series. I will settle it as soon as this game is over. I think most of you guys would have predicted Rainer to win this 2-0 anyway. So, I am sorry about dropping the ball on that one. It's just because we kind of went from co-caster to co-caster to co-caster. So, I've not been on top of the prediction. But I'll settle it for the next series. Looks like Disc is kind of going for something similar again, just having two oracles kind of floating around. This time he has a Twilight and a Forge. He is actually making the Phoenix again for the second game in a row. Maybe he really truly believes in that one Phoenix play. Yeah. Not sure. I feel but like uh, it's one of the things that could really work against weaker Zergs, but I think against someone like Reyna relying on a single Phoenix to lift a queen and then your oracles can find a lot of damage. I kind of feel there is a skill ceiling to builds like that. I just don't really love this investment, but okay. If this guy loves it, if he's comfortable with it, he probably just likes it as well because it's a very fast flying unit that gives him a lot of map presence and some info. So maybe it's just something that he thinks he can always justify and it doesn't slow him down that much. Yeah, That's... I think you're... I think you're right. That's why he does it. And I guess it's nice to push away that one overlord. That's close. Mm -hmm. It's not bad to do that. But uh, I agree that definitely versus like a worse Zerg, it would probably be a lot more helpful. But versus Rainer, you're going to struggle to find like any special damage with something like that. Rainer is kind of doing the same thing again. I see Overlord mm -hmm. Speed already on the production tab. He is building a lot of links. He's building a lot of roaches. I don't know if Rainer really saw something on the other side of the map that should have made him worried. There's also a chance that he doesn't want to show anything yet before he plays against the other Protoss in the the next rounds because there's a good chance he gets protos quarterfinals and semifinals tonight if he goes that far and maybe this is just one of these builds that reyna believes in that he can always win with just because he is that good he knows that he is that good and yeah even though disc is an incredibly good player he probably just feels that disc is not going to be able to stop this attack and yeah. if it is that simple yeah why do something else right yeah i mean i completely agree with what you're saying and it looks i'm getting deja vu from how it's starting as well at least this time the lings are a bit ahead of everything else, so some got picked off before. But I think when the roaches and the ravager show up, it's going to be so hard to hold this. Uh, even with the batteries finishing up and more gates finishing up, it's going to be very hard to hold. That scouting phoenix of disc is going to fly over this entire army. Rainer is here, morphing a bunch of roaches into ravages. Queens are going to try to buy a little bit of time. Queen's already doing their injecting though. Stasis Trap gets activated. Battery Overcharge is activated all the way in the back, but the Corrosive Balls are still going to land in the heart of this Protoss army. Does feel that this is a much better defensive setup for Disc. The only question is, is it good enough that Immortal live for a while? 
I don't think it's good enough, but like I agree with you, it was a lot better. And honestly, the Phoenix did God's work. It was lifting something. It stayed alive and it lifted. But the storm connecting, yeah, it's it's really, yeah, it's tough to hold that. It's really hard to hold that huge push at the third base, oh, yeah. especially yeah with oracles. This is one of these builds where if you feel like you're better than your opponent, you can just do this. You can probably get away with it. You're probably gonna get the W. So not the most inspiring zvp series of all time but rainer is showing all of you nerds out there that winning zvps really doesn't need to be all that complicated you make a couple drones you make a couple queens you send everything to the other side of the map and just like that it's over yep that's why we need more violence miners we need max packs to come out and be like it's impossible to hold that truly impossible <laughs> i don't know if max packs would fall to that strategy rainer might give it a shot but i personally well, don't see it no, uh, I don't think he would. We got unlucky, by the way, because I see that Harstam is four minutes into a game versus a Showtime. I don't know if that's game two already, but I feel like not too long ago he updated everybody in the chat that he beat Nikic, the Belarusian Zerg, two to one. So there's a chance that that's only uh, game one. And if you want, we can hop into game two of that PvP together. Yeah, sure. 